Hello friends, welcome back to this uh, lecture series on Earthquakeization Design of Structure. In this unit, we are discussing the basics of uh, the various methods of analysis that are used for uh, Earthquakeization Design of Structures based on the methods that are proposed in IS 193 Part 1 2000. In the previous lecture, what we have done is we have seen the basics of uh, the design philosophy based on which the various methods are proposed by the Indian Standards Codes, where we discussed that under no circumstances the structure is allowed to collapse. It may undergo non-structural failure or it may undergo structural failure or it may undergo complete failure as well. But even in case of complete failure, the uh, signs of failures or signs of collapse need to be predominant so that the loss of life and loss of property can be avoided to the maximum extent. Right? So with that uh, background in mind, today we start with the basics of uh, different types of uh, methods of analysis that are used for the resistant design of structures. Okay, again, just a reminder of the codes that we are using that is IS 1893, IS 4326, IS 13920, and IS 22. IS1893 is the important code for this particular lecture that we are discussing because the design philosophy and the method of analysis are proposed based on the philosophy of IS-1893. So when you talk about the uh, different methods of finding the earthquake forces, right, because when you talk about method of, an method of analysis, the predominant goal that we have in our mind is that we need to find out the earthquake forces. What we do is we need to calculate the earthquake forces. In order to calculate the earthquake forces, the code is proposing two methods. First is the static method and second is the dynamic method, right. Now, as the name is suggesting, static method is something where the time component will not be there. Whereas in case of dynamic com dynamic analysis, the time component will be there because the change in the, the change in the forces, the value of the forces with respect to time is anticipated, right? So if you want to calculate based on the static procedure, then it can be calculated by the equivalent lateral force method. And if you want to calculate the dynamic analysis, or we want to calculate the forces based on dynamic analysis, then two methods are proposed. First method is the response spectrum method, and the second is the time scale. Right now, the, what, what is the basic difference between the uh, equivalent lateral force method, response spectrum method, and time scale method? Of course, we'll be uh, discussing about the same in detail in the further lectures also. But uh, those with the background of structural dynamics may be well aware that in case of static force, uh, static force method or the equivalent, equivalent lateral force method, the focus is only on one value. That is having the maximum amplitude, the maximum displacement, and that value is taken, and correspondingly the forces are worked out. Whereas in case of response spectrum method, it is anticipated that since it is going to be having multiple degree of freedom, right? So the result of that, for each degree of freedom, you will have a set of values. A set of values will be including eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? And corresponding to these eigenvalues and these eigenvectors, the other values of for values of forces can be found out. Whereas in case of time history analysis, the history of the particular site is studied and the spectral acceleration values in the past are be calculated or to be collected and based on the data that is obtained from the site of the, you know, the particular site, the further calculation is to be done. Okay? So three methods are there, equivalent lateral force method, response spectrum method and time history analysis. So if you have a very simple structure of a low height, then equivalent lateral force method is a good method. If you have a multi-story building, of a regular structure, then response spectrum method is the appropriate building, uh, appropriate method. And if you have uh, an irregular structure, or, irregular, or rather an irregular multi-story structure, then in that case, time is the best method. Right, so first we talk about equivalent uh, static load method. So the equivalent static load method is basically, it is a unique concept used in earthquake engineering. The concept is attractive because it converts a dynamic, dynamic analysis into partly dynamic and partly static analysis for finding the maximum displacement inducing the structure due to the earthquake setting. As I said earlier also, that the focus of static and static method is purely on the maximum value, right? So whatever the maximum value will be there, that value will be taken and correspondingly the forces will be worked out. For seismic resistant design of structures, only these maximum stresses are of interest and not the time history of the stress. The equivalent lateral force for an earthquake is defined as a set of lateral static force which will produce the maximum peak response of the structure as that obtained by the dynamic analysis of the structure under the scale. And it is 
restricted to only a single mode of vibration of the structure, where in case of response spectrum method, it is taking into consideration the multiple mode of vibration of the structure. First, what is going to happen is that at each and every four, there is going to be a concentrated mass, mass and with each and every mass, uh, uh, there is going to be a degree of freedom associated, right? So, as and when the number of pores are going to increase, the number of degree of freedom are going to increase. Now, if you talk about static uh, force method or equivalent letter force method, if you want to calculate the value of base shear, that is given by VB, then VB is equal to basically, it is equal to mass into acceleration, right? Why? Because what is happening, as you have discussed in the earlier lecture also, that uh, whenever mass will be there, then uh, uh, there, there will be a corresponding inertia force in the structure, right? And this inertia force will be acting in the opposite direction to the horizontal force being applied. So therefore, uh, this, this inertia force will be given by the value of mass into acceleration. That is, VB is equal to m into a, right? Now, mass is converted into weight. So mass is equal to m is equal to w by g. The w is the weight and g is the gravitational, gravitational acceleration, right? Now, the formula is again rearranged. And it is put as VB is equal to W into A by G, where A by G is converted into A H, which is known as basic horizontal seismic coefficient as per the Indian standard code, that is IS293. Right? So VB is equal to A H into W, where VB is the base shear, W is the total seismic weight of the structure, and A H is the basic horizontal seismic coefficient. The A and G are the acceleration induced at the base during earthquake, and G is the gravitational acceleration due to gravity. Now, all methods do are based on certain assumptions. Similarly, here also in case of static coefficient method, also certain assumptions are there, right? So which are these assumptions? These assumptions are assumed that because what is going to happen that the situation that we are assuming in case of structures uh, may not be exactly the same on site also, right? So based on that, certain assumptions have to be made. So the assumptions that are made, the first assumption that is to be made that the structure is rigid, right? The, all the joints that are going to be rigid in then perfect fixity between the uh, assume perfect fixity between the structure and the foundation. Now this same thing cannot be adopted or the same thing cannot be achievable on uh, site depending upon the soil condition because as the code is suggesting there are three types of soil conditions that is soft, medium and hard right so as a result of that depending upon the soil condition total fixity may not be possible also. It also depends on the type of detailing that you need right but however for the state for the calculation of seismic forces uh, this ground motion, every point on the structure experiences the same acceleration. This may also vary depending upon, because what is going to happen is that we are going to apply the forces on the beam column joints, right? So these forces are going to be distributed based on the stiffness of the joint, right? So the joint which is having going to have higher stiffness is going to carry higher force, and uh, joints that are going to have lesser stiffness are going to carry lesser force, right? But however, if we want to so ensure that all these joints move by the same amount and will be undergo the same displacement, then in that case, the concept of rigid diagram comes into picture, which we will be discussing later. Dominant effect of earthquake is equivalent to horizontal force of bearing measure over height and determine the total horizontal forces on the structure. Now, VB is equal to AH into W, where we have seen that during an earthquake, the structure does not remain rigid, it lifts, thus, the base shear is distributed upon the height. Now, this distribution will be seen in the next slide that we will see, where the distribution of the base shear along the height of the structure is indicated, right? Now, the AH is modified considering to consider the following effect, right? This basic or base uh, seismic horizontal acceleration is uh, seismic horizontal coefficient is modified to consider the following effect. Which are the effects? First is the natural period, second is damping, third is mode state, fourth is type of structure in place, fifth is the subsoil condition, and sixth is the importance of the structure. If you talk about all these forces one by one, then first thing is natural period. Natural period is affected by what? The natural period is going to be affected by the dimensions of the building. All the buildings cannot be of the same dimension. Certain buildings have, may have the width more, certain buildings may have the height more, certain may have the length more, right? So what is going to happen is that depending upon the dimension of the building, the time period is going to change. When the time period is going to change, then corresponding uh, changes are going to be observed in the uh, structural dynamic parameters of the building as well. And damping, damping depends on the material of construction, whether you are going to open an RCC building, whether you are going to open a steel building, whether you are going to open a composite building, whether you are going to open a structural shear wall building, depends on the different types of the buildings that are there. So, depending upon the type of building and the kind of structural system adopted, the damping is going to depend. Then, mode shape, obviously, again, it is going to depend on the number of stories of the building 
and also depending on the dynamic on the damping whether damping is permitted or damping is not permitted right so the result of that the mode state values are going to change then types of structures and phase whether the structure is regular or irregular which zone it is located so based on the you know, based on the zone that is code is discussing as we have seen in the previous slide that from zone 2 to zone 5 different types of forces are being applied right so the result of that the as the forces are going to increase the displacement and the amplitude in the structure is also going to increase in addition to that if irregularities are there in the structure then also it is going to affect the performance of the building in the subsoil condition again same thing whether partial fixity is concerned full fixity is concerned or no fixity is concerned then yeah, that also makes a lot of difference that is whether it is soft soil medium soil or hard soil and last is the importance of structure that is this residential structure whether it is an institutional structure whether it is a school building whether it is a college building whether it is a nuclear power plant right so based on the importance of the structure an importance of the structure is calculated based on the utility of the building and the number of people that are going to reside in that particular building right so that is also going to affect the calculation of seismic profile so this value of ah is modified to consider these following uh, six types of effects that are going to be there and these effects can not be net we need to keep them in mind while designing the structure now this value of ah that is wb is equal to ah into w is modified right ah is modified so ah is given by uh, z is by 2 r b where z is the zone factor zone factor will be varying from zone 2 to zone 5 that is from point 10 to point 36 then sa by g value sa by g is the spectral acceleration taken from the response spectrum value that is going to depend on the time period right for soft medium and hard soil is given in the code for different conditions different sa by g values are going to be there i is the importance factor that is uh, to consider the or you can say the importance of the structure r is the response reduction factor or the ductility factor whether the building is going to be uh, detailed as per ductile uh, detail for ductile uh, detail for ductile behavior or brittle behavior right so based on that the response reduction factor the ductility factor is also going to be there therefore this formula of h is equal to z is by 2 r b is going to come to picture now as we have discussed right so here is the table that is there the snapshot of the uh, table from the is 1893 is given here here we can see zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 where the minimum value is 0.1 and the maximum value is 0.36 that and similarly the damping factors are also there so damping factors uh, are also from 0 to 30 and the values are also given depending upon the uh, damping that you are going to consider now one important note that is kept over here in mind that is to be that zone factor z is for mc for db is z by 2 that uh, as you can see over our analysis we have discussed in the previous slide also there are two types of earthquakes that the board is discussing first is maximum critical earthquake that is mc second is design basis earthquake that is db right and as we have discussed in the philosophy that db is preferred why because in order to ensure that the structure is going to be designed economically we go for db and in order to achieve db the value of z is divided by 2 as you want to design for maximum critical earthquake then the value will not the value of z will not be divided by 2 right so if you give the value of z as it is then it is going to be for maximum critical earth then again importance factor as we have seen right so again depending upon the type of service that is going to be provided whether it is going to be a school building it is community building nuclear power plant industrial depending on that type of structure the value may be taken as 1 or for all other buildings the value may be taken as 1 and 1.5 recently the code is being revised so is uh, 1892016 has also included a value of 1.2 for number of residents based on the number of residents and other things also so that thing also has to be taken into consideration right and the design engineer will have the flexibility that he can take any value between 1 to 1.5 depending upon the utility of the building right pattern structure depends upon the functional use of the structure characteristics characterized by hazardous consequences of the failure force of its functionality use historical values and economic then talking about the response reduction factor that is the ductility factor or the or you can say the strength factor right so as i said that depending upon the type of structural system that you are going to adopt and the type of detailing you are going to do this value of r is going to vary from 3 to 5 right so ordinary is as you can say in the table omrf and smrf is given so omrf is uh, for uh, omrf the value will be value is be taken as 3 and for smrf the value is taken as 5 and then if you are taking Dual structural system and all those other kind of systems. Then, for all different systems, the values are given as different as listed in the table over here. So, depending upon the type.
type of system that you are going to adopt, you have to select the value of R from this particular table of the code. Then, as we talk about SA by G, that is a spectral acceleration. I said that spectral acceleration is dependent upon the time period. In order to calculate the time period, three formulas are given. Two formulas are for the RCC building and one formula is for the steel building. Right? So, in case of RCC buildings, two cases are considered whether it is without infill or with infill. Right. So the first formula that is for E is equal to 0 0.075 H raised to 0.75 is for without infill. And if you ever want to uh, take the effect of infill, then it is T is equal to 0 0.09 H under root of B, where H is the height of the building and B is the maximum dimension of the building in that particular direction. Right. So if you are calculating the earthquake force in X direction, then it is to be considered a DX. Then if you are calculating the earthquake force in Y direction, then the value is to be given as D. And similarly, if you want to calculate the earthquake for time period for steel building, then for steel building, the formula is given by T is equal to 0 0.085 as raised to 0 0.75. So once this value of time period is available with you, then you can go to the code and then the values of SA by G with respect to different soil condition is given to you. And based on that, you can calculate this, uh, take the select the value of SA by G and calculate the value of horizontal sector. Right? So now once this value of GB is equal to AH into W, where AH is the uh, horizontal spectral acceleration and W is the seismic weight of the structure, once that is available to you, that means total base shear is available, right? Now we need to distribute this base shear along the height of the structure as we have seen in the earlier slide. So in order to distribute, the distribution will be done based on the formula of K by calculating the story shear and that is given by Q. Q is equal to VB into WI into HI square divided by sigma into Sigma, sigma from uh, sigma equal to i equal to 1 to n wi into hi square where q is equal to design lateral force at the particular floor level wi is the seismic weight of the floor that is dead load plus live load now seismic weight can be calculated based on is183 two guidelines are given if the value of uh, live load applied on the structure is less than 3 then the reduction factor of 0.25 is to where 0.30 0.25 is to be applied and if the value of live load is greater than uh, 3 then in that case the reduction factor of 50 percent will be applied, right? So, the seismic weight of the structure can be W is equal to dead load plus 0.25 LL or dead load plus 0.5 LL depending upon the live load that is applied to the structure. HI is the height of the floor measured from the base and N is the number of stories in the floor. Right? So, once you have these values, so what is going to happen? One example is given over here that uh, if you have a G plus 3 building with you, then the frame of the building is the typical frame of the building is going to look like this and the for distribution of forces on the story level is indicated over here and uh, and the right hand side uh, right hand side corner the base shear diagram distribution of the base shear is also shown as you can see the maximum value of base shear will be there at the ground level and as you go above the value of base shear is going to reduce however the so uh, distribution of story shear will be on the reverse direction. That is, the maximum story will be on the top level and minimum story will be at the bottom. Right? And again, the value of Q can be found out using the formula that we have already seen. Right? So that is all about the seismic coefficient method or equivalent letter that is based on the static analysis. This particular method that we have seen here is known as the part, is known as the part of static analysis. Right? The time is not a component as we have seen. Right? And only the maximum values are taken into consideration, and based on that maximum value, the stresses are calculated and the forces are applied. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about the dynamic analysis method, that is, or uh, that will be including the response factor method and the time analysis. Thanks for watching.